Welcome to the 2021 um, Eastside Academic Studies and Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy graduation ceremony. I am Michelle Shaw, and I'm the director of both organizations, Eastside Academic Studies and Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy. We will start the ceremony with an invocation, an opening prayer by Tabitha Darnell. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing all of us here for the special part of our lives. Since before the beginning of time, you knew just what myself and these six girls here beside me would choose to do after high school. And we thank you for lovingly watching us and protecting us for all our lives to bring us here to this stage. I pray that as we look forward in the future, you will be in each of our hearts, giving us courage and wisdom and help us to take what we've learned in the past with us in whatever we choose to do. I pray also that our lives will continue to glorify you and point those around us to your love, your kingdom come, your will be done in each of our hearts and our lives during this next chapter. Thank you for allowing us to gather to celebrate with our family and friends, and thank you for everything you do, have done, and will do in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you very much, Tabitha. That was wonderful. Tabitha is um, like a member of our student council, and she joined just in, the, in her senior year. Prior to that, she was very involved with the uh, student activities, and even though her senior year was extremely busy with college applications, and she's been involved with a lot of different acting opportunities, she still took the time to help us to plan a number of activities this year and was also involved in them as well. So thank you, Tabitha. Our next student that will come up is Medina Ala, and she will give our welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing? It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Eastside Academic Studies and Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy graduation ceremony. We are so thrilled to be gathered here today to celebrate all of these wonderful graduates um, during these times. Every one of you have made an impact on us and we're so grateful. I know personally this journey has been challenging but with the guidance of our families, teachers, and peers, we have been able to close this chapter and discover a new one. With that being said, thank you so much for joining us today and celebrating us. We are so thankful. And um, yeah, so we have a very special day planned out and can't wait to get started. Thank you. Um, just wanted to explain, you can see in the program that Medina is our NIPA valedictorian. So there are two different organizations that are participating, and, um, and you, you will be able to clap in a second. Um, but um, in NIPA, Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy is an accrediting organization, and you'll see more about it in, the, in your program. But what we're able to do is we oversee the um, academic career life of the students while they're in high school so that they can get an accredited diploma, which means that we have a standard in which we uh, allow certain kinds of classes and grading and we're overseeing. We don't do that for Eastside. So for Eastside, everyone is doing their own classes their own different ways. So we don't have anything like a valedictorian, a salutatorian, because it's apples and oranges. We can't really put everything together. But with the Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy, we can. So each year, we do have a valedictorian and a salutatorian. And this year, uh, Medina is our valedictorian. And I just wanted to say a little bit about her. I know there's something about her in the program. But I want to focus on one thing about her, though. Uh, she's excelled academically. But apart from that, and it is mentioned in, in her write-up, that she has been the um, drive team captain and the lead mechatronics engineer of e-robotics team. And the e-robotics team is the only all-girls varsity robotics team in Georgia. I think that today we're doing a real 
girl power thing because all of our graduates are girls, but uh, just happen to be. But anyway, it's an all girls robotics team and during their rookie year, they made it to the world championship and they made it the next year after that. And then the year after that was COVID, so they didn't have the world championship. And so instead of just putting the team to rest, Medina organized her team to use a 3D printer and other resources to create, assemble, and donate PPE items, such as headbands, face shields, and cloth masks to local COVID-19 testing centers and local nursing homes. So she didn't just sit there and not do anything. They, the team actually did that during that time. And Medina was named both the first tech challenge, FTC, and first robotics competition, FRC Dean's List finalist during her last year of competition. No one in Georgia has ever earned that distinction. So we're very proud of you, Medina. <laughs> and now we're going to have a musical selection by Carissa Kocher.
That was beautiful, Carissa. Carissa is one of our students at Eastside, and she's been involved, um, very actively involved with various Eastside activities. And just recently, she and two other students um, won an award for their very funny skit on our Eastside Talent Show. And um, in the past, I've seen Carissa perform in Eastside Talent Shows, where she has um, sang for us. And I knew that she could sing, but as I told her yesterday, I didn't know that she was that good. So that was great, Carissa, and I uh, really appreciate that you uh, performed for us. Each year, we do try to have one of the underclassmen perform at the graduation. So I think Carissa did a great job. Thank you, Carissa. Okay, and now we're going to move on to our commencement speaker. Our speaker is Amor Owens. And yes, there is a relationship between her and Derek Owens. They are husband and wife. <laughs> uh, Amor grew up in a home where art, music, and performance were nurtured. She watched her mother perform on stage and television during opera and playing in concerts as a classical pianist. Her early training began when her mother taught her music and voice. Amor continued her training and study of the arts and drama throughout high school and college. She attended Vanderbilt University and majored in fine arts and philosophy, and she received her graduate degrees in education from Vanderbilt and Mercer University. After college, she taught for many years at Gwinnett County Public Schools and performed in community theater. Amor also worked behind the camera for a local film company as a producer and costume designer. She is currently a working actress for film, TV, commercials, and theater. She has been cast in co-star and recurring roles in TV shows such as WandaVision, Cobra Kai, MacGyver, The Resident, Good Girls, Law & Order SVU, Dynasty, Being Mary Jane, and guest starring roles in NCIS New Orleans and FBI Most Wanted. I'm sure that everybody in here must have heard of at least one of those shows. <laughs> so, um, she also worked with writer and director John Stewart in the movie Irresistible and had a supporting role opposite Marcy Martin in the movie Little. Her most favorite role is that of a wife and mother in real life. She's happily married to Derek Owens and is a mom to two wonderful teenagers, Claire and David Owens. And also, just so you know, when, we, when I asked her uh, originally to, uh, to speak for us, there was a possibility that she could have been um, off in a role somewhere. <laughs> and so uh, we are very, very glad to have her, that she's actually at home right now, and she's able to speak to us. And so we'll have a more Owens. Greetings, graduates, parents, teachers, administrator, and friends. I am so honored to speak with you today and share my life lessons that I've learned since my high school graduation many moons ago, which hopefully will be helpful to our recent graduates as they embark on a new chapter in their lives. Funny how trends cycle back, and I see, still see glimpses of the 80s with shows like Cobra Kai, and fashion trends like overalls and mom jeans. I wish, <laughs> I wish now that I never gave away my vinyls and my record player and my Polaroid camera because I think I would have been that much cooler to my own teenagers if I had the originals and was playing those dusty records. <laughs> Yet so much has happened in my life. What I will share now is what I would say to my 18-year-old self about her future and what to watch out for. I went to a small Catholic high school in Birmingham, Alabama. I served on the student council, took honors classes, was president of the choir, played sports, and graduated in the top 10 of my class. I even held a part-time job after school. I always did my best, and I had a core group of friends whom I dearly loved. My parents were very proud that I got into Vanderbilt University. Actually, my dad was shocked that I got into Vanderbilt University. I remember that day. And my sister also went to Vanderbilt University. And so I had a support system in place. So I thought I was ready for college. Yet, 
little did I know that I would be faced with many obstacles and that I would not be prepared for it. And only life could teach me along the way. My faith was tested. My intellect and my psychological and emotional tenacity challenged. I was rediscovering who I was and what my purpose in life was. Looking back now, I realized that there were a handful of things that I held on to that kept me going, which helped me get to where I am now in my season of life and career. First is my faith in God. Having gone to a Catholic school, I was taught to pray and read the Bible. But it wasn't until I was older that I had a personal relationship with Jesus. My prayer life deepened as my faith grew in the midst of life's challenges. I went through a dark period in college. I stopped going to church and read about other religions, and I questioned everything. But it was through this questioning and having my faith tested that my faith grew. I had a deep sense that God had a purpose for me. God says in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me, and when you seek me with all your heart. This is one of my favorite verses because it has proven to be true in my own life. I have learned about God's goodness and his paternal love for me. He is a personal God, a father who is always caring, always protecting, sometimes disciplining, but always in love. Even those who aren't believers can sense that calling or purpose. I've been listening to and reading about successful, famous people such as Steve Jobs, J.K. Rowling, and Elon Musk. And each one of them had a story of when they hit a point of darkness and lack of direction in their lives. And then somehow, in the course of events, they found success. What kept them going was their passion in something, a faith in something outside of themselves. And that was bigger than themselves. When Steve Jobs dro dropped out of school and was taking a calligraphy class elective at his college, little did he know that the class he was curious about would become one of the main features in the Macintosh computer he built. And then, when he was fired from his own company, he was motivated to start two new companies, Pixar and Next, which, as we know, has been instrumental in the movie and the technology industry. He stated in a speech at Harvard that you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect. You cannot foresee how the dots will connect in the future, but you can trust that they will. And that one day, maybe years or decades later, you can look back and see. J.K. Rowling, a single mother raising a daughter in the midst of abject poverty and having been rejected by numerous publishing houses, held on to her passion to write. She had a belief in her purpose and in her capabilities as a writer that kept her going. She said that her experience with poverty and failure was what made her stronger and contributed to her success. Elon Musk didn't know what to be when he grew up, but he did have a desire to invent. He also had a desire to invent something that would improve humanity. That mission and sense of purpose, which came from the heart, led him to invent many things, such as Tesla and SpaceX, which still drives him to pursue new innovative projects. We have in all of us given God-given gifts, talents, and passions that we are to explore and hone to share with the world. Our mission is to find out what that is and see how we can develop it. So how does one find this mission and purpose? The second advice I have for you is to ask why. I recently read a book by Simon Sinek entitled Start With Why, and in it he studied companies who asked what their mission was about 
And these companies who took the time to figure out what their mission was, was more successful than those companies who merely existed for profit. If we apply this existential question to ourselves as asking why, then we can better understand ourselves and our place in the world. In college, I chose to major in fine arts and philosophy, much to the dismay of my parents, who wished I was aiming for medical school and law school. Understandably so, like most concerned parents, they wanted me to have a secure future and a decent chance of landing a job right out of college. So I changed my major five times. And the third time I went into the admissions office, the office workers were very concerned. And then I came in the fourth and fifth time, and I would come in and they would be grinning and asking me, so what is it this week? And of course, I was embarrassed, but I kind of went with it and laughed. I did settle on my final decision, which was fine arts and philosophy, and I, and I stood by that. I changed my major because I was wanting to please my parents, since after all, they were paying my, for my tuition. Vanderbilt, it was not cheap. <laughs> but I was different from my parents, and my own passions lay in the creative arts. And I was tenacious in being honest with myself and asking that question of what I was most passionate about. It may sound odd, but daily I would ask this question when I was a bit confused and felt like I had lost my way. I would ask, if this was my last day on earth, would I be doing this today? And if the answer was no, then I wouldn't do it. I would reevaluate. But if the answer was yes, then I would proceed. So this process of self-discovery truly helped me on my way of living authentically, despite what everyone else was telling me to do or be. Unfortunately, we have many distractions today with social media and an onslaught of information coming at us. And it's difficult to sort through it and easily get caught up in it and drown in it. So we end up lying to ourselves and putting up a false image to the public. Discovering our authentic selves starts with asking the honest question, why? If you still cannot answer it for yourself, then seek the Lord, read his word, and pray. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, 4. Know what you love and are passionate about, and that will help you keep going. Don't compare yourself to others, and in my industry, it's so easy to do. You are uniquely made with unique talents and gifts that you can offer the world and be of service to humankind. Try new things, and don't be afraid to fail. And it was through this trying and discovering that I found my passion and purpose. Remember, God has your back. Learn to fail well and never give up. There were many difficult struggles along the way which I had to endure, and some hard lessons were learned. For instance, prior to being a costume designer, I tried my hand in fashion design. When my children were young, I discovered sewing and was making clothes for my kids. I started with an old sewing machine that had been passed down to me from my father after he passed away. And then I bought a serger, and I was soon sewing night and day. My passion for creativity and beauty had found a means of expression. I was soon making clothes for other customers, and before long, I was running a small business at a designer's co-op in Buckhead. By 2005, I had a small business, and I named it Bobo's Inc. Children's Clothing. I was wholesaling to potential buyers across the country to like 75 retail stores and two in Iceland. What started as a side hustle that I did for fun at first eventually grew into this wholesaling clothing business. Being my first business, there was a lot that I didn't know and many unforeseen expenses. And instead of making regular profits, I was accumulating debt. Then in 2009, the stock market crashed and our country experienced a great financial crisis. Many retailers went under and so did my clothing business. Instead of my beautiful designer clothes 
being snatched up by adoring fans all over the globe. I was left with a basement full of unused fabric and a negative account balance. So if you need any fabric, I still have some. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> At times, it felt like a dream had died. But God was still at work connecting the dots for me. Looking back, the failed business was a blessing in disguise because I had been a slave to keep keeping the business going. And as a result, my health and my time with my family suffered. Although it took three years to pay off the business debt, God provided and gave me a way out. I regained better health and much needed time with my, my family, my husband and my kids. Furthermore, it was through this experience in the clothing industry that I met my teacher friend who introduced me to costume designing for film. Had I not gone through that experience in the fashion industry, I may not have found my way into the world of film and television. Another obstacle I had to overcome was an incident that occurred in college when I was trying to figure out what to major in. I think this might have been the third time I switched my major. At the time, I thought I would major in theater. So I decided to take an acting class across the street from Vanderbilt. Unfortunately, I had a very negative acting teacher who discouraged me from acting. He said, you know, there aren't very, very many roles for Asians in the theater. That was way back when. And unfortunately, it is getting better now. But way back when, it was true, but it was very disconcerting. And needless to say, I felt deflated. So I pursued fine arts and philosophy as a major instead. I was still in creative arts because I knew then that the arts and literature were my passion. But having now been discouraged twice from pursuing an acting career, I took a different path and enrolled in the Peabody School of Education. And after finishing graduate school, I became a teacher for Gwinnett County Public Schools. But my passion for the arts continued to surface. I infused the arts in my teaching. I made history come alive, doing historical plays and simulations. And my students loved it. We had a great time. For 16 years, I taught at Gwinnett County. Then in 2010, I was invited by a teacher friend, who I just mentioned earlier, to help design some costumes for a film. And so I agreed and worked on set. And this film was going to raise awareness um, about the problem of trafficking in our country, more specifically in Atlanta. As soon as I stepped foot on that set, I was hooked. I was bit by the film bug and felt right at home in that environment. They kept asking me back to help in the art department, and eventually I became one of the producers heading up their second unit department. And it was during my time at Whitestone Motion Pictures that I met many actors and filmmakers who encouraged me to once again give acting a try. So I took an acting class from a woman named Sandra Dorsey, who was a Broadway star and a wonderful teacher and human, great artist, who taught me all about the method in the group theater. I fell in love with acting. She drew out the artist in me and encouraged me to hone my craft and my creative process. And I've been training ever since, nonstop. In 2013, I resigned from teaching and I signed with my agent, J. Purvis Talent Agency, and I've been working professionally ever since, booking commercials, film, and television work. So now I'm here having an exciting and meaningful start to a career in acting. I can't say that the path was easy, but I can say that it was good. And even though my parents preferred job security to the fulfillment of my dreams, and even though my original acting teacher had actually told me to quit, and even though it took two decades in a failed business and years of work, when I look back, I see how God taught me the lessons I needed to learn and how he had a plan, and how he connected the dots for me, and I wouldn't have it any other way. The third advice I have for you is to find community and build connections. 
Find your tribe. Build and nurture healthy friendships. There is a saying, if you want to go somewhere fast, then go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. I finished reading a book written by journalist Johan Hari, who wrote Lost Connections. He struggled with depression all his life and wanted to write this book to share what he learned about his mental health struggles. He concluded that one of the biggest causes of depression is loneliness and lack of connection with other humans. We are not made to be alone. You need a support system whether that be family, friends, neighbors, and colleagues. In the entertainment industry, as in any industry for that matter, it is very important that you work well with others. Every job I've ever had required me to work well with other people. And in my field, we have to work well as an ensemble to make sure that we have a successful production. When I ran my clothing business, I had to work with retailers, factory reps, sales reps, customers, and now I work with agents, managers, actors, casting directors, writers, producers, directors, and other crew members. There are so many moving parts in making a film or television show, plus there are millions of dollars attached to a project at stake, so everyone on board needs to make sure they are doing their part so as not to waste any more money than necessary. You don't want to be that person. Working professionally in my business is key. This means being prepared, having done your homework, meeting deadlines, being on time, and being kind and loving and respectful to yourselves and other people. So, I hope that this roadmap I have shared with you today will help you on the next chapter of your life. I hope that you will remain curious about the world around you and curious about your potential for greatness. I'm very excited to see what the future holds for you and know that I will be praying for you along the way as you pursue your dreams and your passions. And may, and may God bless you along the way. I wish you all the best in your life's journey and congratulations on a job well done. And one more thing, if this was my last day on earth, would I be doing this today? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Amor. That was a blessing. Um, and just... I think it's wonderful when people can share their own personal experience, and for you all who are going off, and I, as you're going to hear soon, these are very gifted young ladies, and I'm sure just like um, Ms. Um, Owens was just saying, you probably have a passion for something, and it might not be something that you even know right now, but it'll come out, and like she said, don't be afraid to fail, know that God has a plan for you and find that community. And it is so important um, when you're in college to make sure that you find that community of people that are gonna push you in the right direction. So that's, it's a matter of who you choose to be around and make sure that you're with those people pushing you in the right direction. And I loved just the fact that she can share her story with you because as we can see, she is very successful in what she does. And just so you know too, for those of you who um, have children or you all young people who are attending Eastside, Ms. Owens will be teaching a Foundations of Acting class this coming fall. So feel free to uh, sign up for that. And remember that register before by June 1st and before the enrollment um, fee goes up. So uh, just a little plug for her class there. <laughs> so please feel free to join for that. And now we will be moving to our presentation of diplomas. And for the last few years, we have had our illustrious math and physics teacher, Derek Owens do that for us, and we're glad to be able to have him do that for us again this year. Thank you. It is good to be here. And thank you, Amor, and thank you, Michelle. We have seven lovely young ladies graduating today. I'm going to read each of their names, and they will come up and take their diploma and face the audience. 
and I will spend a couple of minutes reading the page from the program about each student. So during that time, friends and family, feel free to come up front and take pictures. And, um, and then and feel free to applaud at the end for each student. There's only seven, so clapping is allowed intermittently. So first we have Medina Anur Allah. Medina Allah is the third of four children and was homeschooled before attending Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy. This bright, ambitious, and delightful soul is dedicated to improving her community via girls and underrepresented communities. Through school and extracurriculars, she has grown a strong passion for engineering and environmental science. Spending her ac academic career developing robotic skills, teaching K-8, and advancing her nonprofit organization, Eve Robotics, where she is currently the executive vice president, all while balancing her work and studies. Medina is a well-rounded student in and outside the classroom, sharing a love for art, photography, music, volunteering, and American Sign Language. In addition, Medina is a proud member of the first EDNI Youth Advisory Council, WIT Girl Ambassador, and Vice President of Outreach at Georgia First Career and Technical Student Organization. Medina will be majoring in mechanical engineering at Howard University in the fall and plans a career with heavy focus on sustainability and environmental improvement. Never be limited by other people's limited imaginations. Medina Anur Allah. Mary Elizabeth Cassis. Mary Elizabeth Cassis, known to her family and friends as Ellie, is the daughter of David and Ann Cassis. Curious and thoughtful, she is always smiling. Her favorite song as a toddler was, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. She was not only happy, but also spread happiness to all those around her. Ellie was home educated since kindergarten, attending classical conversations, metro academic studies, east side academic studies, and dual enrollment at Truett McConnell University. In her spare time, Ellie enjoys gaming and recording YouTube videos, eating Chick-fil-A, where she worked for almost a year, spending time with her best friend Lacey, and going to Disney World. In between her hobbies, work, and studies, she managed to take care of her two pet rabbits, Minga and Thumper. Ellie's excellent grades and love of medicine has led her to Barber Orthopedics and Spine, where she currently works as the youngest medical assistant in that office. She is planning to attend Georgia State University this coming fall and major in neuroscience and then, Lord willing, medical school. Mary Elizabeth Cassis, congratulations. Tabitha Christine Darnell. <laughs> Tabitha Christine Darnell is the older daughter of Andy and Jenna Darnell. She has been homeschooled since kindergarten. As the firstborn, her parents were new to homeschooling and learned right along with her. It has been a joy to teach her and see her learn and grow into the young woman she has become. She has taken outside classes a few different places, and we feel blessed to have found East Side Academic Studies. The teachers and community are amazing, and we are thankful for the time she has had with them. Tabitha has always had a love for reading, Disney, swimming, and the beach. She loves God and seeks to honor him in all she does. She is a kind and loyal leader who perseveres to reach her goals. As she started taking ASL classes, she found that she enjoyed learning about and had an interest in the deaf community. Next year, she will attend Gardner-Webb University with plans to major in American Sign Language. She does not yet know how she will use that in the future, but we look forward to seeing how God will use it in her life. Tabitha Christine Darnell. <laughs> Kayla Renee Irvin.
Kayla Renee Irvin has been a hybrid homeschooler throughout high school, attending classes at Eastside, Metro Academic Studies, and dual enrollment at Georgia State. She has enjoyed soccer since she was very young and has played on an academy team. She also has a heart of compassion for people often overlooked, such as the elderly or those with disabilities. God has cultivated this into a desire to become a pediatric nurse, especially after living with her two medically fragile foster siblings. She feels very comfortable in a clinical setting and is able to quickly connect with children and babies who need a loving heart. Kayla has served her church, her church home at First Alliance of Atlanta in many roles, but especially in the children's ministry. She has been a reliable volunteer over the years. Before COVID-19, Kayla volunteered at three summer camps for children with disabilities and loved her special friends she made there. She also volunteered weekly at Stride Ahead, an equine assistance therapy facility. This combined her love for special needs people and horses and was something she really enjoyed. Kayla will be attending Toccoa Falls College in the fall and pursue, pursue her, deg her degree in nursing. She is signed to play on the women's soccer team. Kayla Renee Irvin. <laughs> Lillian Grace Jackson. <laughs> Lillian Grace Jackson is the oldest of two. An avid Girl Scout and photographer, she is also very active in the arts. Her love of colors and inclusion helped her become a part of the 6% of Girl Scouts who earned their gold awards. She held seminar seminars that covered the topic of colorism. The goal was to combat the discrimination of darker skinned complexions. As she grew up, her love of art shined. Grace took many art classes and went from drawing and animation to photography. She has what some would call an artistic eye. As she entered her teen years, Grace faced many challenges. She had a battle with diabetes, which she overcame. She faced an issue with finding herself as a growing black woman. She has come to the conclusion that overthinking and doubting yourself will not get you where you need to be. She has potential, she just needs to, be un just needs to understand that self-discipline does not grow overnight. Flowers continue to grow even after they bloom. When you see progress, do not stop. Use it as motivation. Grace is finally closing this chapter of her life to move on and pursue higher education. She hopes to become a lawyer. Lillian Grace Jackson. <laughs> Ulysses Sinclair Lewis. Ulacia Lewis, God-fearing creative force, founder and CEO of Sinclair Signature Styles. Ulacia has always been a strong, talented, and creative individual. Growing up, Ulacia has always had an interest in creating new things. She loved to cook and create delicious dishes, and she would take old clothing items, revamp them into a completely new style that she came up with, and would often treat her family to in-house fashion shows, displaying her new clothing line. Fast forward to today, and Ulacia has begun her journey into fashion by starting her own business, which has been a childhood dream of hers. In addition to fashion, Ulacia is a force to be reckoned with in debate, which sparked her interest in international law. Ulacia is a well-rounded individual whose main desire is to help others and do her part in making a difference in her community. Ulacia Sinclair Lewis. <laughs> Joy C. Oswald. <laughs> Joy Oswald has been home educated since her preschool years. She has been blessed with wonderful teachers at many area homeschool programs, including Artios Academy, Summit Academy, Solid Ground Tutoring, and Eastside Academic Studies. In addition to attending high school classes at Eastside, she dual enrolled at Toccoa Falls College, where she made Dean's List. 
Joy is a born creator and people helper. She enjoys world building and creative writing, knitting and crocheting, drawing and, and painting, and playing piano. She feels most herself when walking in nature and playing with her dog, Daisy. She is quick to assist anyone who might need a helping hand, whether it is with tackling a task or with understanding a concept better. Joy has a knack for explaining things systematically and excels at teaching children. Joy is planning on taking a gap year after high school to discern what her next educational steps will be. She is exploring potential careers in languages and cultures, computer programming, and service-oriented trades. Joy C. Oswald. Congratulations to all of you. Now we will have a slideshow that was produced by Medina Allah.
Don't we have an amazing set of graduates this year? Very accomplished, and we're, we know that there will be so much more that we'll be seeing from all seven of you. Uh, before we go to our presentation of our graduates, we're going to present them to you. I just want to make sure that I thanked um, certain people for what they have done, how they've contributed to us today. I wanted to thank, of course, Lilburn Alliance Church once again for allowing us to use this space. And it's a wonderful space. In the past, when we used to have, um, this started off as we used to have Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy graduations. We've been having that for at least 10 years now. Um, Eastside joined in within the last four years or so. But prior to this, we would go and find church and church and different churches to rent. And then when we were able to land on Lilburn, it has been a wonder, a blessing to be able to have a place like this. We have been able to use the services of Webb Sanders, who's our audiovisual person up in the booth there. And Thomas Bostwick, who is currently live streaming this ceremony. And so hopefully some of your family members who couldn't make it uh, have been able to um, watch it on, online. We usually have um, a, um, Christy Helfen play for our graduations, and she's done that for something like at least the last 10 years. But this year, uh, just about a month and a half ago, she found out that she had to go on a, she, her husband had scheduled a family trip for her to go, and she had to leave, I believe it was yesterday, for the trip. So she, she, want, she found a replacement for her, a very accomplished student, the person who played um, when we first came, when, they, when you all first came in, and who played the Pomp and Circumstance. Uh, we did a, a recital, uh, Christy Helfen, I, I am one of her students too, but we did a recital um, on Thursday night, and the way that you know where you rank amongst the uh, pianists is that she has them going from the, the, the youngest, usually the little ones, and then as you're better and better in skills, you go further and further to the end. And so I progressed to third from last this year, so that was pretty good. But Anna was the last, which means that she is the premier person during that year. And so we want to thank Anna Kirk for playing for us today. <laughs> want to thank Carissa for singing for us and just really blessing us with her song. And, of course, we want to thank Derek Owens for always being here and available to do his role in handing out the diplomas. And Amor Owens for taking her time out to be our speaker today. And then there are some background people that I want to thank. Um, Margaret Schumann, she's always, always, always my right-hand person, always there helping, and she has played a background role in this. She helped organize the graduates. She's helping with the refreshments that we're going to have afterwards. And so I just want to thank Margaret Schumann. And this year and last year, we've been able to uh, have one of our parents really be very helpful, especially with the whole seating thing and where people are supposed to sit. Um, and that has been Anne Marie Jordan. She, she's helped with our uh, escorting people to their seats. And we have our young people who also have helped. Uh, at the door, you, you will have met Ema Shaw, my daughter, and Shanice Smith, who helped out with the programs. And then we have my other daughter, and um, I didn't, we didn't hire a professional photographer as such, but this, my daughter is studying in that area and has been um, working quite a bit in photography. So she has taken a lot of pictures, so hopefully we will be able to have some pictures of the graduates from her, too. That's Ife Shaw. <laughs> and the um, programs were produced by... Gina Darnell, as you can see, these beautiful programs. That's the Darnell family, sorry. The Darnell family. <laughs> and as you heard, the uh, slideshow was made by Medina Allah. 
And we definitely want to thank all of the teachers that have taught these young, these young ladies throughout their years, whether it's teachers here at Eastside, or it's um, teachers in other programs, or it's your parents. We definitely want to thank the teachers. And then, finally, I'd like to have all the parents and grandparents of the graduates please stand. Parents and grandparents of the graduates. And we want to thank you all. Because without them, we know, without you, we know that they wouldn't be where they are today. And especially within homeschooling, it is a, a path that is not taken by many. And it is a step of faith. It really is. It's a walk of faith. And when you can see that your work has ended up with them sitting here today, it is something to truly, truly, truly be proud of. And so thank you, parents, and, and supportive family members, too. We really thank you for what you've done. And so now I am going to be um, presenting our graduates, and then we will close in prayer, and then we're going to proceed out to the parking lot where the uh, students have their senior displays, just their displays, and we will have some drinks and some snacks out there as well. So at this time, I'll have our graduates stand and turn, and you could... I would, I'll, I would like to present to you the Eastside Academic Studies and Northeast Pitt Independent Studies Class of 2021. You can move your tassels over. Woo! Move your tassels over. be seated for just a moment. Um, we'll close in prayer if y'all could bow your heads with me. Father, thank you for this day, for all that it represents in the lives of everybody here. Thank you for the parents and their commitment to their families. Thank you for these students and for the hope that they have for the future. I pray that you will go with them and that they will follow you their whole life long. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming and supporting our graduates. <laughs>